Hello and welcome back. So in this part we're going to look at the alternative way of handling example number one. Uh, so we're gonna start right here at this place where we had cleared out all of the fractions. It was right after the first step where we cleared out all the fractions and when we, I'm, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna write that down over again down below. So let's write that down this is an alternative way, so I'll put a big or. Uh, and we're going to write down x squared plus 4x plus 1 equals a times x plus 1 times x plus 3 plus b times x minus 1 times x plus 3 plus c times x minus 1 times x plus 1. Okay, so notice that this equation has to hold true for all values of x. And there are some specific values of x uh, that we can plug in here uh, that, is gonna, that are gonna help us out in finding the undetermined coefficients a, b, and c. For example, if we wanted to find a, then what we could do is plug in x equals one. And when that happens, uh, we would get one minus one for the x minus one factors, which is zero times any other factor would be zero. Uh, and so the, uh, the two terms that have b and c in them both collapse to just zero. So let's go ahead and do that so you can see what it looks like. Uh, here we're plugging in x equals one. And on the left side, we get one squared plus four times one plus one. And on the right side, uh, we end up getting a times one plus one times one uh, plus three <coughs> plus, and here I'm gonna write zero because again, uh, when, you have, when you're looking at the term b times x minus one times x plus three, when you plug in x equals one, the one minus one uh, becomes zero times anything else in that term still gives you zero. And that's going to happen again with the c term. 1 minus 1 is 0 times the c times the x plus 1 is still 0. So what happens here when I plug in x equals 1 is that the equation collapses into uh, just a single equation that has a single unknown in it, namely a. So solving this equation, I'll just write it over here, you end up getting a equals 3 fourths. Can you see the x value that we would have to plug in to get b by itself? So if you said x equals negative one, that would be correct. So x equals negative one would get rid of a and c, those, those terms would both become zero, and would leave you with just b. So when you do that, uh, you'll get negative one squared plus four times negative one plus one equals zero plus b times negative one minus one times negative one plus three plus zero. And again, solving for b, which is just a, a couple of steps away, this becomes uh, negative b times negative two times two, which is negative four times b. And over here, uh, you end up getting uh, one minus four plus one so that, that gives you a negative two, and then you divide over and you end up getting b equals a half. So what would the last x value be that we're gonna plug in? If you said x equals negative three, that would be correct. And usually when I'm plugging in these x values, I'm thinking a few steps ahead to uh, save a little bit of writing. For example, I can think negative three squared is nine, um, and then here we're gonna have four times negative three, so that's minus 12. Nine minus 12 is negative three, plus one is negative two. So often there's some of the, the calculations you can do in your head. Saves you some uh, work writing things down. Now when we plug in x equals negative three into the a term, we get zero, because there's an x plus three factor there. Into the b term, we get zero, because again, there's an x plus three factor there. And then when we plug it into C, we're gonna end up getting negative uh, three minus one, which is negative four, 
times uh, negative 3 plus 1, which is negative 2. So negative 4 times negative 2, that would give you positive 8. So solving for c, uh, we would get negative 2 over 8, which is negative 1 fourth. So notice we got the same uh, a, b, and c value in this way in much fewer steps than what we did originally. But again, each way uh, has its own uh, positives and, and negatives. Uh, the first way ends up being good uh, when you have quadratic factors, so you have x squared factors on the bottom. Um, but the second way is really good when you have linear factors, so factors that look like the form ax plus b, or um, x you know, plus uh, b even. All right, let's go ahead and uh, scroll on down to example two, which is a continuation of example one. Here we have the same exact rational function, but now we're going to integrate that function. And we're going to use all of that work that we did uh, just a moment ago. We just figured out how to break down that function that's inside into three smaller functions, the sum of three smaller functions. Uh, so we have, <clears throat> it looked like 3 over 4 times x minus 1, uh, plus 1 over 2 times x minus 1, plus 1, sorry, uh, minus 1 over 4 times x plus 3. So this, again, all was by example 1. So by example 1. There we go. Um, now, one way that sometimes helps to write this is with the coefficients out in front. So this is actually like 3 fourths times 1 over x minus 1 plus 1 half times 1 over x plus 1 minus 1 fourth times 1 over x plus 3. dx. Uh, just, to so, just to set aside the coefficients uh, from the variable parts that we're going to be integrating, because coefficients always are hanging around, uh, either with derivatives or with integration. All right, so here we're going to have 3 fourths, and then what's the integral of 1 over x minus 1? So if you said ln absolute value of x minus 1, that would be correct. Remember the lns get those absolute values. And we have plus 1 half integral of 1 over x plus 1, which in a similar way would be ln of absolute value, x plus 1, minus 1 fourth of, and similarly we've got ln absolute value of x plus 3, plus c. So the real battle on these problems is to do the partial fraction decomposition. If you can break down that fraction, then you can integrate term by term. Thanks for watching, and see you in the next part.